Business. And today, to start our coverage of 2023's East Tech here in West Springfield, Massachusetts, we're stopping in at SW Machines with my friend Kirk. Kirk, Ian. good to see you again. Ian, always good to see you. Thank third, you very much for having round. us. I think it's Number East three. Tech, IMTS, back to East Tech. Always a good time. And what are we looking at here today now that we are on round three? So this is the third time I've spoken to you about the BA322i. This is our best selling machine, covers a lot of different markets. Doesn't matter if it's automotive, medical, industrial, serves a lot of purposes. Those purposes being high production, applications it serves the benefit of reducing your manpower in a much smaller floor space and less energy consumption so really if you're making lots of parts and you need precision that's where you come to sw that's the thing when it comes to these machines the one thing i do know about them is they're for high production but you're also not sacrificing the accuracy or the precision to get it this gets the best of both worlds you know a lot of what we do is automotive historically we've been about 60 percent automotive in recent years here in North America, we've, we've migrated and found new opportunities in new industries, but our core is automotive. And, you know, automotive components, they're, they're not child's play. No. They got a lot of tight tolerances and the expectations of having that statistically controlled process, a 167 CPK, that's not child's play. Not at all. It, it really takes a lot. So to have a production machine that's intended to run 24-7, you can do it in automotive. I contend you can do it in a lot of other industries for a lot of other components. If you can hit those tolerances, you can pretty much do anything. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about high production, one of the coolest things about these machines I'd like to show is when we talk about double the production, we literally mean double the production. There's two spindles and two work holding stations yeah, there. Exactly. So uh, the machine is basically uh, has two sides to it. On the back side of the machine is where we have our three axis stack and access to our fourth axis. And in this case, we also have fifth axis machining. So by having two spindles machining the part at the same time or two parts at the same time, double the output. So this is the 322i. We also have four spindle machines. So in some cases, it's not just double the output in one um, floor space, but four times the output. And when we do four, is that in a row kind of like this one, or is that one, two, three, four? That'd be one, two, three, four. Now certainly there are applications where we can take our table and we can fixture up parts on all four sides of the table. We have um, some four spindle machines that have eight nests on one side. Jeez. And then at 90 degrees, 180 and 270 for a total of 32 nests on one table. Huge production, Absolutely. huge production. Absolutely. That runs essentially once you've got it set up autonomously. That's correct. Generally, we're one and done, meaning we're not having a lot of changeover. Um, sometimes we will have fixtures that can accommodate multiple parts that we don't have changeover. And certainly we have applications where we are utilizing zero point clamping and we mm -hmm. are bringing the fixtures in and out. Still, we're gonna set up and run those parts for a while, but flexible operations, we also have that in our lineup as well. And when we're talking about the tool change, or sorry, the workpiece changing here, let's look at the other side of this. So this is a trunnion, but what you're not seeing from that side is this side, it's a second trunnion right here. Exactly, so while we're doing the machining in the back, we're doing the loading and unloading here. So this happens to have a, a integrated robot. We'll talk about that in a moment, but it doesn't matter if it's a robot, a gantry, a human. The nice thing about the SW solution is I can load it like a vertical machine. I and mean, it's so easy if you are manually loading parts. These are little guys, you know, a few kilograms, whatever. But you get into these parts that are 15, 20, 30 pounds, and it's still much more comfortable to load that um, vertically. Same thing for a robot as well. To be able to orient this fourth axis in the, a nice, comfortable angle, be it 15, 30 degrees, versus having to go onto a tombstone or directly vertically. It gives you a lot of flexibility for a good load. Now, when you're loading this thing, you can actually tell it what angle you want that at. So right. if I want it down a little bit to be able to kind of rock it in easier, or if I want it perfectly flat, I can just program that in the machine. Right. So normally the door is closed. So after the machining of the part, we'll still have the door closed. You see we have nozzles underneath. So the benefit is the door's still closed. I have my part upside down now. I'm blasting it with coolant before I even open the door. And what's the benefit of horizontal machining? All your chips are falling down. In this case, your part's upside down. They're falling down even that much more freely. So again, going to a production application, you can't have chips falling apart no. and around. It doesn't work. It's funny too when you say, you know, oh, it's the chips not, you know, sitting on top of the part. It sounds like such a minor thing, but when it comes to these really tight tolerances, especially on something like Peak, those chips getting in the way for the deflection, for the marring, it's a big factor. Absolutely. And you just, you just can't have it. 
So in regards to the parts that we have on here, here we have a hydraulic lock. And what I'll say about the SW machines, we start as four axis machines. SW does not have a simple three axis machine. It doesn't exist in our lineup. So our fourth axis uh, here is our U, and on the back side where we're machining is A. But you also see the ease of uh, having a fifth axis machine. So to add those planets on our work table, very, very easy. Uh, more than half of our machines, I would say, are set up as fifth axis machines. Really? I, one of the things I think we really help our customers with then on the turnkey side, depending on what industry they're coming from, and in advancing new processes, new ways to make parts, going into a two-op process in SW brings so many benefits versus perhaps a six, seven, eight-op process on the traditional horizontals. A lot of handling, get rid of it, let's automate it, let's do it in work, two work. I see you've seen some of my setups where I have 12 vices <laughs> in a row, have you? Now, when we're talking about this robot, this is typically where we're going to have our parts loading. Correct. So, on the back side of the robot, we have trays that are introduced, a dozen different trays, about yay big. Depending on the size of the component, you can load up maybe only four, maybe 24. Just kind of depends on the size of the workpiece, right? Um, so the benefit and the utilization of our customers is to have that lights out manufacturing. You load up those trays and you walk away. We've got a customer here in New England which has a double, uh, I'm sorry, a dozen of these machines and they literally have one operator serving 12 machines. That's insane. That's 24 spindles, one operator. What workforce problem, right? Exactly. So, you know, in these times with all the challenges we have with workforce, it's a great, nice little add-on to a standard three size, two size machine. And this is an option that comes with it? Absolutely. Or this is an option that you can add on to it, and I assume if you want different configurations for this, you guys can handle all those Absolutely, and we do fully customized automation solutions, overhead gantries, floor-mounted palletized systems with robots in front of the machine. We do that all in-house as well. Now, if we want to go take a look at some of the components here, do you mind if yeah. we take a peek? So as you mentioned, a lot of what you guys do is automotive sector. Correct. So what we're showing here are actually uh, quite a few aluminum components, and uh, that was one thing uh, that we showed nicely at IMTS as well as our linear motor machine. So the 322i is a ball screw machine, um, whereas we also offer linear motor machines. It's about half of what we sell. Linear motors have so many benefits, be, the, be it the precision, the zero backlash. Um, I think the biggest benefit is maintenance. No yes. ball screws. I mean, I <laughs> suppose you've replaced a couple I of ball I have had screws. to clean them and replace them, and every time it's awful. And if it I could takes, get away from it, I would be very happy. And I hope you would do this in a preventative way before yes. you have problems every time. Never have any failures. Never. No, never. <laughs> so linear motors, you know, we sell 25 ball screws to every one linear motor. They just don't fail. There's no, there's no contact. No contact, no failures. So at any rate, uh, this is a hybrid. Uh, battery tray and you know right last year about 5.8 percent of the auto automobiles registered in the states were EV. This is a hybrid doesn't qualify in that space but EV is coming so as we go to EV we need better range. You need better range you go on a lightweight you're going to aluminum. With a ton of material removal this block must start out as 100 pounds and this thing would be what? 30? Well this is a high pressure die cast right here. Oh really? So the machining of this component, gosh, I think it's uh, maybe eight, nine minutes and getting it all around all the seals and faces. Nine minutes and, to do every single one of these bosses. Yep, all, out the, all the holes, holes, drill tap. Wow. Good stuff. And then more of these over here, it's yep. kind of the same thing. That looks like a casting. So casting, Again, cleaning a up control faces. arm, a knuckle, a conrod, um, all very typical parts for SW. Um, we work with a lot of the tiers that are doing the vertical integration with the casting or die cast. Um, that tends to be where we get into those higher OEMs. So automotive is definitely a core part of our business. Now the other industry that we've done really well at recently is medical. Uh, we are we're actually one of the parts in the machine over there was shown. A uh, couple of really good parts for us are the, the knee inserts, be it the base plate or the tibial inserts. Oh wow. I think that's uh, ABS material. This is peak. We also do very well in bone plates, titanium components. And those need to be super, super high finish. Absolutely. No burrs, no, it's going into someone. You know, it, it needs to be perfect. It, it needs to be perfect. And then, you know, you look at these parts and you see S1, S2, where are those from? That's spindle one, spindle two. You can't mess these part up in the medical space. There yep. is no room for error. Surface finish is so key. So we have a lot of doubting Thomases out there. Ooh, two spindles, can you do it? Yeah, we do it. There it is. We do it, we do it. And we see some really thin, I don't forceps. know what that is, so forceps. Like, you know, fancy tweezers, right? But achieving that kind of finish on that thin a part, I, 
That blows my mind. Anybody who's done machining for any length and of time. these types of components, you know, they're all disposable. When you get into those disposable components that are in the operating room, that's where we come in. Why? Because you throw them away, you need more, it's a high volume product. It's right? a good business to be in. Exactly. Now, if people want to find out more about SW Machines, where can they go? www.sw-machines.com. Thank you very much.